We're traveling west on Interstate 40 in Arkansas, and we're on our way to the small town of Cromwell, Oklahoma. It's located about 50 miles east of Oklahoma City, just south of the interstate. Our reason for going is to see how factual the movie, You Know My Name, is. The movie stars Sam Elliott. He's also the producer and one of the best Western stars out there. And he's smart too, because he had enough sense to marry Catherine Ross. Remember, she played at a place in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid with Paul Newman and Robert Redford. You Know My Name tells the story of the last few years of Oklahoma lawman Bill Tillman and his attempt to clean up the wild and woolly oil boom town of Cromwell, Oklahoma. Sam Elliott is perfect for the part of Bill Tillman. They both have some of the same Western qualities. During the early 1920s, oil had been discovered by wildcatter Joe Cromwell. It wasn't long before the population jumped from zero to 10,000 in just a few months. As oil derricks spread up, so did brothels and saloons. Although prohibition was in force, bootleg liquor flowed like water, with gambling and prostitution wide open. There was no law except one federal revenue agent named Wiley Lynn, who seemed to create more problems than he solved. It was said that drugs from Mexico was brought in and dropped outside of town to be picked up and distributed by local bootleggers. When a group of businessmen began to believe that Prohibition agent Wally Lynn was actually protecting bootleggers and lawlessness in Cromwell and Seminole County, they went to the best known lawman in Oklahoma to clean up the town. The problem was Bill Tillman was now 70 years old and had been retired from law enforcement for years. No question, William Matthew Tillman was at one time one of the bravest and toughest lawmen in Oklahoma to ever wear a badge. At the same time, he went out of his way to prevent confrontation. Even the outlaws that he arrested said he was fair. Bat Masterson, who Bill once served as deputy in Dodge City and Ford County, Kansas, once said of all the lawmen that he'd worked with, including Wyatt Earp and others, that Bill Tillman was the best of all of us. William Matthew Tillman was born on the 4th of July, 1854, one of 10 kids. Now the movie about Tillman shows a 12-year-old boy on his way home from picking blackberries is stopped by a lawman, Wild Bill Hickok, to ask if the youngster had seen a man in a wagon with a pair of mules. Bill said yes and tells the lawman which way the wagon went. The scene was actually true, and it made such an impression on the youngster that he wanted to become a lawman like Wild Bill. From Tillman's directions, Marshal Hickok arrested the outlaw that had stole the wagon and team. And when Bill was in his late teens, he was hunting buffalo in Kansas and making enough money to ask his younger brother Dick to come and join him. While on a buffalo hunt, Bill's party was attacked by Shawnee and Kiowa war party. And when the battle was over, Dick lay dead. Bill always blamed himself for his brother's death. Although the movie showed Tillman's later life with his wife Zoe and two kids, she was actually Bill's second wife with whom he had three boys, Mayo, Richard, and Woodrow. By 1877, 23-year-old Bill Tillman was part owner of the Crystal Palace Saloon in Dodge City although he didn't even drink. That spring, he married 16-year-old Flora Kendall. Two years after marrying Flora, Bill would get his first job as a lawman. It was what he had always wanted all of his life. 
He'll serve as deputy sheriff under the famous Ford County Sheriff, Bat Masterson. Flora hated Bill's job as a lawman. She was home most of the time worrying about him and raising four kids, Charlie, Dorothy, William, and Vonya. In May 1884, Bill was appointed city marshal of Dodge City, Kansas. Now, this is a picture of Dodge City law officer. Seated second from the left, is Wyatt Earp, and standing third from the left is Bat Masterson. Tillman is standing on the right. He had been working with Wyatt Earp and others before being appointed marshal. The citizens of Dodge presented Tillman with a solid gold badge that he was wearing the day he was killed. In 1892, Bill, along with Heck Thomas and Chris Madsen, was appointed U.S. Deputy Marshal. They will become known as the Three Guardsmen, making over 300 felony arrests. Tillman will continue being reappointed as U.S. Deputy Marshal for 19 straight years. During his career, he single-handedly captured Bill Doolin, leader of the Doolin Gang, also chased the Dalton Gang, along with two teenage girl outlaws called Cattle Annie and Little Bridges. He also helped clean up the notoriously rough oil boom town of Perry, Oklahoma. Bill is a second from the left, leaning on his Winchester in 1893 at the height of his fame. By this time, Bill had moved his wife and four kids to a farm in Chandler, Oklahoma. In 1987, Flo and the children moved to her mother's in Kansas City. She had been diagnosed with tuberculosis. Three years after moving to Dodge, Flo Kendall Tillman will pass away on October the 12th, 1900, at the age of 38 from complications of tuberculosis. Shortly after Flo's death, Bill will be elected sheriff of Lincoln County, Oklahoma. On July the 15th, 1903, 49-year-old William Bill Tillman married 23-year-old schoolteacher Zoe Stratton. Bill will take Zoe to his ranch in Chandler, where he lived with Flo. Although Zoe was sometimes left alone like Flo and raising her three sons, she didn't seem to hate Bill's profession as Flo did. In 1910, Bill will be elected to the Oklahoma Senate, but he resigned as senator after one year in order to accept a position as the chief of police for Oklahoma City. Tillman was served two years as police chief before retiring. During his tenure as chief, he was given credit for helping to rid the city of criminal elements. In 1915, Tillman released a silent movie about the Old West called Passing of the Oklahoma Outlaw. Part of the original film was shown in the movie You Know My Name. Tillman felt that Hollywood was making heroes out of outlaws and he wanted to set the record straight. He even had the original marshals like Heck Thomas and Chris Madsen, play their own parts, with Bill, of course, as the main hero. Back in September 1993, the Marshals had a running gunfight with the Doolin Dalton gang, where several Marshals were killed and outlaw Roy Daughtery, known as Arkansas Tom Jones, was captured and sent to prison for 50 years for train robbery and murder. Arkansas Tom, as he was called, was given a pardon in 1910 by the governor at the urging of Marshal Bill Tillman. Tillman wanted Tom to play himself in his movie. He also had a bit part for outlaw Henry Starr. One year after Arkansas Tom had played himself in the passing of the Oklahoma outlaw, Tom held up the Farmer and Miners Bank of Aranogo, Missouri. One month later, he robbed the First National Bank in Fairview. Tom will continue his outlaw ways until Joplin, Missouri detectives 
gunned him down on August the 16th, 1924. Although Bill Tilden was retired and no longer a law officer, his wife Zoe stated that he slept with a gun under his pillow, afraid that the many criminals he had arrested might take revenge. In October of 1923, Joe Cromwell, an amateur geologist, discovered oil in northeast Seminole County, Oklahoma. Word spread and Cromwell, an unincorporated town, went from zero to 10,000 oil workers within a few months. Saloons, restaurants, and boarding houses shot up with tents and quickly erected buildings where there was not enough room to house all the workers. They slept on flat roofs and the last man up would pull up the ladder to keep thieves away. The two-story blue building in the distance is the only original building still standing. It was a bunkhouse for oil workers. Wherever oil was, so was brothels, prostitutes, gamblers, and saloons, even though alcohol was against federal law. Unscrupulous doctors would sit out front of the drugstore and for a dime would write prescriptions for whiskey. State agents believed that narcotics from Mexico was brought in and dropped outside of Cromwell, where bootleggers would pick it up and sell it along with alcohol. Organized crime controlled all vices in town. Even the legitimate businesses had to make payoffs. Cromwell was not yet a formal town, so there was no city police to keep order. Honest businessmen went to Governor M. E. Trapp, asking if he could persuade Bill Tillman to take the job as town marshal. They could only afford one marshal and one assistant. Therefore, they believed that Tillman was the only tough, honest person that could clean up Cromwell. The problem was convincing the 70-year-old Tillman to come out of retirement and take the job. They offered him $400 per month which is real good money in 1924. When they offered to furnish a deputy to work with him, he took the job. As it showed in the movie, You Know My Name, within the first few weeks of town, Marshal Tillman had got rid of almost half the houses of ill repute, including most of the working girls. He was more generous to some of the dancing girls that only charged 15 cents a dance. He had closed gambling tables and half of the saloons, but bootleggers, dope dealers, and organized extortion was harder to deal with. Bill thought that they were being protected by a crooked federal agent named Wiley Lynn. Tillman claimed that he would make arrests and Wiley Lynn would let him go. Lynn claimed that Tillman was closing some places and protecting others, like Ma Murphy's dance hall and cafe. It was well known that Wiley was a heavy drinker and appeared in public impaired and flaunting his authority. Tillman and Lynn had butted heads on several different occasions. We're turning south now off of Interstate 40. It's only a few miles to Cromwell. The once booming town of 10,000 now has around 280 citizens. Just driving through, it's hard to believe that this town was once called Wicked Cromwell. Around 10 p.m. on the night of November the 1st, 1927, Marshal William Bill Tillman Jr. was drinking coffee at Ma Murphy's Dance Hall and Cafe with his deputy Hugh Sawyer and a Mr. Sermon. Murphy's was located where the monument to Bill Tillman is right over there. When Federal Agent Wiley Lynn drove up and parked here across the street from Pop Murphy's, or sometimes called Ma Murphy's, Agent Lynn was believed to be highly intoxicated from alcohol or drugs. He was with a local brothel owner named Madame Rose Luca and one of her girls, Eva Canton, who was with a Fort Seal sergeant named Thompson. Lynn got out of the car, pulled his gun, and discharged it 
right here in the middle of the street. When Marshall Tillman heard the shot, he pulled his gun and ran out of Mom Murphy's to confront Wiley. Bill grabbed Wiley's wrist that held his gun and raised it up in the air while ordering Deputy Sawyer to prize the gun from Wiley's hand. At the same time, Bill pressed his weapon into Wiley's ribs. When Deputy Sawyer told Marshall Tillman that he had the gun, Bill relaxed the grip on Wiley's wrist and lowered his own gun, not knowing Wiley had a hidden weapon. Wiley pulled a second gun from his pocket and shot the marshal twice in the stomach. And then he ran to his automobile parked here, where Rose Luca was waiting, and they drove off. Marshal Tillman was taken to a used furniture store next door to Maul Murphy's and was placed on a couch he passed away 20 minutes later. The next day, Wiley Lynn drove to Holdenville, the county seat, and surrendered to federal authorities. The body of Marshal Tillman lay in state at the state capitol, the only lawman to do so. He was then laid to rest at the Oak Park Cemetery in Chandler, Oklahoma. On May the 20th, 1925, Wiley Lynn was acquitted of the killing of Bill Tillman. Lynn claimed that Tillman interfered with a federal officer in the performance of his duty, and that the pistol shot in the street was by accident, that Bill had threatened to kill him. He testified that the marshal was trying to protect Maul Murphy's from being closed. Rose Luca, who could have testified as to whether Lynn was intoxicated and his reason for being there, unfortunately, she disappeared before trial and never surfaced again. Another major witness fled to Florida, but he did write a letter to ex-marshal Evett Nix that his life had been threatened if he testified, and in his letter he said he saw Lynn murder Marshal Tillman. Unfortunately, the letter could not be introduced in court. One month after the death of Bill Tillman, it is believed that lawmen from all over the state of Oklahoma and friends of Bill's burned Cromwell to the ground in retaliation for the death of Marshall Tillman. They left only family homes. Cromwell will never recover and the fire will never be investigated. While Elian continued to perform as a federal officer for a short time, but eventually lost his job. Seven years and eight months after Marshal Tillman's death, on July the 17th, 1932, while Elian would get into a gunfight with Crockett Long, an agent of the newly formed Oklahoma Bureau of Investigation. Both men die from their wounds. President Theodore Roosevelt said of Bill Tillman's bravery, Bill would charge into hell with a bucket. <laughs>